Hello everyone, I'm Farmer Sim and welcome back to Deutschland. I do hope you're all doing very well and having a lovely day. So, here we are. We are now in the month of September. A couple of minor changes since the last episode. As you can see, I have a farmhouse. Now, it became immediately apparent when I started to sort out moving into the next game month that I didn't actually have a sleep trigger on the farm. There isn't one down on this farm on the uh, Mundenhof. Uh, so short of trying to find my comfiest tractor cab, I figured I needed to do something about that. Now I know, I yes, there's many a mod out there I can place down a doormat or something like that. Uh, but I really wanted to take advantage of what the map has to offer and what the map does have to offer. Uh, separate from the three main farms that you can choose, it does have two uh, beautiful farmhouses that you can choose to purchase. Now, ordinarily, with the money that we had, I didn't really want to fork out a load of money for a farmhouse. Uh, so what I did was, and this was just a, a, as a bit of a, an end result of my map tour that I did a, a week or so ago when this map first came out, uh, I spent obviously quite a bit of time on the map making that map tour and I had discovered a couple of the collectibles. Uh, now there's not many collectibles on the map, there's 16 in total, they're coats of arms, little shields that you find lying around, quite colourful things, so they're quite easy to spot. Uh, obviously I haven't found all of them, I, I have only found four of them, that's where I, I kind of knew where they were from my map tour. Uh, and you get 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros, sorry, for each one that you pick up. So in total, with there being 16, obviously we've got a potential of 160 grand that we could uh, find around the map. I don't actually know if you get an added prize or premium once you found all 16. Maybe we'll find that out. But I don't have a problem doing collectibles, quite frankly. Uh, and especially when there's only 16 of them at 10 grand a piece. That's, uh, you know, it's a Let's Play series. We're going to be, you know, playing the map as it is, has been created by Edo Mod. Uh, the collectibles are there it's a one and done thing isn't it you know it's not something you can rinse and repeat constantly and just get endless supplies of money uh, so i'm quite happy to do it so yes i found four of them so that put forty thousand euros into the bank account and i purchased this house now this house was just under fifty thousand euros and it also came with a plot of land this little field of grass here now it's not particularly big um i haven't loaded in i haven't done any um precision farming data or anything with it yet we'll do we'll sort that out in the near future but it, yeah it's just a, a relatively small area of grass here on the north of the map so we'll probably do something with this at some point uh, but for now we need to crack on because as i say we are now in september um we've got a little bit of work to crack on with or quite a bit to be honest uh so let's uh but i've, I've kind of figured that this farmhouse was ideally placed to be the farmhouse for our farm here, the Mundenhof. Look at that, a bit of wild deer out in the fields, lovely stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's crack, get on down to the farm and have a check on, uh, see what we're going to crack on with today. So first and foremost as well, I'd like to say a massive thank you for all of your comments here in the comments section of the last episode. One in particular that I'd like to bring up is uh, from Thomas Matthews 274 Hello mate, hope you're doing well. Uh, who very, very kindly pointed out a very helpful little bit of information for me. And it is regarding a potential, well, it's a, it's a mod conflict, essentially, between the automatic water feeding system that I have several of down here on the farm and the cow barn. Yet another thing with the cow barn, eh? It's a bit of a thing, that, isn't it? I've uh, suddenly discovered that I can't get milk from it, and uh, now there's another... It's not it's, it's not game-breaking, it's not a problem. I've sorted it out now, anyway. Uh, but the automatic water feeding system that I had placed down to keep this cow barn topped up with water uh, created a conflict with the um, with the production of manure and slurry as in if the water system was placed down this cow barn did not produce manure and slurry and I did test the fact I uh, fast forwarded time into the next month where we are now just as a bit of a test run and sure enough with the mod with the mod activated come the next morning there was no manure and slurry with the mod removed Fast forwarded again into the same moment, plenty of manure, plenty of slurry. So I have got rid of that uh, automatic water system. It's, I've only had to get rid of it on here. It works, it seems to work uh, for all intents and purposes. It seems to work fine for the still, for the sheep and the pigs. That's no, that's, uh, no problem because we have got manure spawning down here, which I believe is from the pigs. Uh, and we do have slurry in the slurry tank from the pigs. So, uh, and now, as I say, from the cow barn we have now got as you can see manure is on the floor there and we do have some slurry as well if i bring up the uh 
information box in the bottom right hand corner as you can see we have just over 13,000 litres of slurry and just over 11,000 litres of manure uh, now there was one another thing that I uh, I'd actually missed it on my map tour while discovering all of the things um, because from here I'd just seen this as a little bit of a decorative item but it isn't as you can see from the top right top left sorry uh, it says enter vehicle so if we do just that we can enter what is a manure scraper so if we press the x button there what it does if we try and keep an eye on the if you see the floor around where the cows are stood if we press x there what we'll see eventually come towards us if you just look in the distances where the cows are the manure is starting to be scraped towards us and this is absolutely genius and i can only assume that this is the this is the part of this cow barn that was causing the conflict with the uh, the manure so there we go and now it tips it onto the ground there for us to uh, to manage and pick up ourselves now that is absolute genius if you ask me so now that makes its way back we do still have some there so if i press that again there we go it's picking up the bits it's missed tips it back on the ground how amazing is that absolutely incredible and you just jump out the vehicle as it was a tractor and there we go we've got our what was it 11 just over 11,000 liters on the floor so if i just check that we've uh, thoroughly mucked out the barn there we are how amazing is that <laughs> absolutely incredible again just another kudos to uh, to edo mod for this map just another incredible um point of detail it really is absolutely amazing so, and obviously as a result of having to remove that automatic water feeding system, uh, I have had to purchase a milk tanker, which is here. So, this is from, as you can see, from the uh, decals on the side, LSFM Inf Innovations. It's from the LSFM tank pack. This has a capacity of 18,000 litres. So, this is now primarily and solely for filling up this cow barn with water. So, that's great. All sorted there. Uh, I did uh, bail... I've all, onwards from the last episode when we bailed up all the straw in field 32 over on the hill over there it's a lovely misty morning here on deutschland but uh, yeah that's our field there in the distance on the hill just under the big uh, the lovely church there i picked up all the bales and i have put them into our automatic bale pallet storage shelf in here so up there we have i think it's is it 29 bales uh 25 sorry 25 bales so that's they're all stashed up there neat and tidy uh the sheep have started producing some wool what have we got there 70 liters not a huge amount but uh and another little uh, point i discovered as well was just this lovely little staircase that runs down into the back of the sheep barn here uh so that's really cool um obviously these guys are doing all right all good as are the pigs and the chickens and the ducks it's all good but yeah there's no there doesn't seem to be a mod conflict with the uh the sheep uh, sorry the the pigs they still produce manure and slurry uh, as you can see there from the info box in the bottom right slurry 2101 and 1545 of manure so we'll just leave them to it for now got a couple of eggs here from the ducks or the chickens i'm assuming it's the chickens isn't it um 29 pieces of eggs <laughs> so that's all good they're all doing absolutely perfectly uh i think that's pretty much it for wanted for what i wanted to uh bring up before we go get cracking on with the day's day's field work now now that we are in september uh we do have the capacity to plant a couple of crops i think it's canola and oats uh just popping very quickly into the crop calendar uh yep there we go we can plant canola and oats so we may well get crack on with that at some point it might not be this episode yet but we'll, we shall see because uh, i haven't actually planned that far forward what i know i do need to crack on with uh, as a matter of urgency just because it's one big job i did bring it up in the last episode but it's one big job i just want to get done because i find it quite uh, it's a painful one for me uh, and that is the spreading of lime um all of the fields of again popping into the map pda very quickly uh, so there's our new little grass field that came with the farmhouse uh, we have these two fields of grass here which are ready to cut now as i mentioned in a previous episode the plan is with the, with these two fields uh, once i have got the first cut out the way i am going to uh, join them all join them both together do a bit of work here remove a few trees again like we did in the last episode hopefully get a little bit more than 252 quid for them by the time my uh, 
sell what we've got in here maybe i might have paid for my chainsaw <laughs> uh but yeah the idea is just to uh, do a bit of landscaping remove a couple of the trees here uh, there will still be a couple of islands on this field um again there are some lovely uh which way am i going let's get down to this grass field and just go and have a quick look there are some lovely areas that i'd like to keep in there just because they are they're really quite nice and quite quaint quite frankly but there's some um hello that was a bit of a lag spike wasn't it um yeah, there's there's some kind of wood decoration, decorative uh, like land walls. I don't know what you'd call them, but uh, yeah, not going to be getting rid of them. Um, there you go, these things here. Uh, so we'll be keeping those and creating some kind of island around them. Um, maybe do a bit of smoothing off here just to make that lump and bump a bit smoother. But we'll be we'll be creating a field into this little area here, um, potentially getting rid of. Yeah, we'll be getting rid of all these trees again, doing a bit of landscaping, smoothing all that off. Um, and this bit down here. So we should have a few more trees here to make something from. So that's something I'd like to get done. Uh, that may well get done off camera. Um, because obviously I like to use cosplay and auto drive and stuff and uh, to put my uh, field work into cinematics. I'm not really going to be able to do that with these two fields separate as they are. They're a little bit small and pokey. Um... So yeah, I may as well get I may well get all that stuff done off camera. As I will be doing with the lime spreading as well. Um I'm going to going into the again quickly into the map PDA. So yeah, these two field these two ones are ready to go. We'll be mowing and turning all that into hay, baling that up and stashing the hay bales into the uh, bale storage for now. We've got these two big grass fields up here, which I plan on running the forage harvester in, getting the grass mown and picked up. Uh, thrown into the silage trailer and auto drive will be ferrying each trailer over here and putting it into our silage bunker over at the cow barn uh, and we need to get that fermenting away we also have field 52 down here in the bottom left of the map here uh, that is currently empty it is in a plowed state uh, so in order to get some uh, crop into the ground there we need to run the cultivator um, in the current form that it's in at the minute it's still attached to the fence uh, it still doesn't have the uh, the seeding function attached to it uh, now i don't believe that even when it has the seeding function attached it's not a direct drill uh, as far as i'm aware there's no mention of it in the shop in game uh, so with that in mind i feel i need to just run run it as a cultivator first when all the fields are ready to be drilled then we'll uh, reattach the seeding function to it and go from there so with that in mind uh, we need to make a start on something now don't we so i think what i might do is uh, very hopefully very quickly uh, i'm going to jump in the green 724 here and we're going to attach the lime spreader that's directly in front of us it is it does have a tank of lime in there that was from when i tested my new lime fill spot there um and i'm just going to hopefully very quickly run round because there is going to be quite a few trips back and two to the lime point um with the fields being completely empty they are going to drink the lime so that's the plan pto cables there we go let's lift that up excellent stuff Right, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, crack on with this, get all these fields sorted out with their lime, and then I shall pick you up as soon as possible. Right then, liming finished, and that was a task. If I'm honest, uh, our bank account is now pretty much €20,000 lighter than what it was. Uh, we had to make 23 trips back and two to the uh, line point that I created in the last episode. Um, I appreciate the hopper isn't massive in this one. It's 3,900 litres. I think I can, you can. It does have a, an unrealistic capacity if I wanted to, uh, but I'd rather not. I think it's. Uh, I prefer to keep to a realistic one. But the main point of all this is the liming is done. Now, it has uh, increased the yield in these grass fields as well. I've done all the fields that, uh, that I own, uh, by the way. Um, it has increased the yield by a couple of percent. Uh, previously, it was uh, hovering around the 112% mark in the yield. Uh, at the point where I am here, it's 115. There's a, there's a few points that read 117% uh, expected yield. So that's all good. But it's done. Big sigh of relief. It did take me a while. It's taken me just about an hour to get all that sorted. Um, but... Time to crack on. So the grass fields that are just next to our farm, the two that I plan on stitching together, I'm going to leave those for now. Those are, 
in their current state, I'm going to get those mown. I'm going to get them turned into hay, turned over uh, and baled up. But I think that's the kind of job because because they are quite tricky little fields, I think, at the minute. Uh, I'm going to leave them for something that I do hopefully relatively quickly off camera and get all that field work stitched up and uh, get the trees cut down and stuff. But uh, for now, I'm very keen to uh, crack on with a bit of field work and present it to you guys. So uh, I think we're going to go and grab uh, one of the big toys, the Crone Big X uh, Forage Harvester. And we're going to crack, a, bring ourselves back up here into these two large, rel they, are, they are pretty large fields, to be honest. Uh, this one here goes, you can see it sweeps all the way around this long sweeping left-hand corner here, uh, right off into the distance there. So this, it's got a decent size, to be honest. So we could get quite a good chunk of grass out of this, and this one as well. Uh, so as I say, we're going to run the forage harvester, we're going to run the other black 724 with the silage trailer get all this grass cut and uh, get it stuffed into our silage bunker so let's get ourselves back to the farm get cracking right then here we are now another thing i did add to the farm very uh, quickly i forgot to mention earlier on at the beginning of the video is i have uh, blessed it with a jet washer um it's one I do use. I know any of you who've watched any of my, many of my series so far, I do uh, tend to use this one quite often because I just prefer it much more. It's uh, it's considerably cheaper than the base game ones. Obviously, we're, we're, we're all familiar with those grey ones that you can place down. They're about €4,000, aren't they? Pounds or dollars. Um, I just find that a bit excessive, quite frankly. As somebody who does spend a lot of time with jet washers, I do a lot of car washing and detailing. Um, four grand for a jet washer. No, thank you. <laughs> So I always use this one. This is a mod by Missy B. Um, it's a thousand euros, pounds, dollars. So it's way more affordable, um, and I just much prefer it. So we've got that on the farm now. Now I know I know the other 724 needs a wash as well, but we're gonna we're gonna be uh, sticking with that one shortly. That's gonna be running the silage trailer, um, and we're gonna be getting you out as well. So I think what I need to do first and foremost, we need to tuck this one away, get it tidied away into the workshop. Let's just let's see if we can do this in one hit. There we go. That'll do. Let's bring that down. There we are. So PTO and cables, detach that. Turn you off. And now we want to be jumping into you, big lad. Put you to work for the first time so fingers crossed this is going to work now this is going to put my auto drive course to the test um i'll be driving this one myself because i think that's asking an, even a little bit too much of auto drive uh we do have uh, i think there's a stone archway in there through into the town there that uh, it might struggle with i haven't actually tested that one but i'm gonna utilize utilize the lovely little uh, what's this one again the 314 there we go yeah this is the perfect header trailer tractor quite frankly so it's this that I'm going to be testing with auto driver with the uh, header trailer. So let's carefully reverse it in here, get it attached to this. There we go, that should be about right. Lovely stuff. Right then. Okie dokie, excellent. So, well, that was that started well, didn't it? I'm going to get myself tied in all sorts of knots here, aren't I? Oh no, just about managed. Go on. Oh yes, <laughs> pulled myself out of that one relatively drama-free. So. I think we are going to start working, as I said before, in the, the slightly bigger field. So, which number is that again? Field 54. So, let's bring up my heads-up display and fire you off. Field 54. Field 54. There we go. Fingers crossed. Right. I'll see you all over there. ASAP. And get the tractor and silage trailer hooked up as well. Send that on its way. I'm almost 100% confident that that will make it there via auto drive without any interference from me and bashing into anything. So I'll see you over there in a few moments' time.
Well, there we go. That was, I suppose, a resounding success. That seems to have worked. Auto drive's got these both of these lot here under its own steam. Excellent stuff. Right. Well, as I said, we're going to start in this field. I think for now, I'm just going to start with this field. I'm not necessarily going to consider getting that one done as well. Maybe we'll see. We'll see how time plays. Uh, but let's get everything hooked up and get cracking. Right, there we go, job done. Quite an excellent job, if I don't say so myself. That one ran relatively like clockwork. Did take a very long time though, if I'm honest. Um, but we have a good chunk of chaff now over in the bunker silo. So, I'm gonna get all this lot tidied up, back to the farm. That's the, uh, obviously as you can see, the silos trailer's just on its way back with the last load. Uh, there wasn't a huge, uh, a full trailer's worth there, but uh, it was the last of it. So, as I say, we're gonna, uh, Get tidied up here. Let's get this uh, header popped back onto the trailer for now. Get it sent back to the farm. There we go. Auto lock. There we go. Good stuff, good stuff. Right, so, yeah, let's uh, get back to the farm. I'll see you there in a few moments. Right then, back at the farm. Everything is tidied up. Now, check this out. <laughs> I've never seen such a neatly stacked uh, silage bunker ever. And our auto driver's done every single grain of this. I have not touched a thing here. This has all been done or, uh, through automation while uh, in the making of that cinematic. But look at that. Now, I'm, I'm, I can only assume that the, the fill plane looks like this because that's how Edo Mod did it. Um, but either way, I just think it's it's so neat and tidy. I don't, I don't really want to touch it and compact it down. Um, but yeah, looking at the numbers there in the top left, 361,496 litres. So that's amazing. That is one one of the reasons why I'm not uh, going on with that other second grass field at the minute as well, because I need to do, if I am even going to try and get that field into here, it's going to require a little bit, a little bit of input from me. Uh, now, I don't actually have any silo compaction uh, machinery on the farm at the minute. Um, what I will 
what I've I've actually done this on a couple of other uh, series before, but what I actually do is I use the telehandler with the bucket that's got a half a decent capacity, and I kind of use that just to scoop it up. It does take a while, don't get me wrong, and it's going to take this one quite a long time as well. Uh, but essentially, I'll just I'll just scoop it up, and you know, put it down in different places and just try and try my very best to level it out. And once I've got it level. Uh, then I can start compacting it down and perhaps when that's done we may well have room for another field because if I can bring all this down to kind of this height and then compact it down I'd imagine that's how it should work I should be able to do that but for now um, with us having um, I suppose I've got a bit of a list of things that I can I can take my pick from haven't I uh, we could drop we could uh, do a spot of drilling in this field if we wanted to we could do a spot of cultivating over in oh it's nice and white now because i've limed it you can see it quite clearly but yeah in field 32 over there we could go and run the cultivator in there or in field 52 the empty field on the other side of the map we could run the grass roller in the grass in the grass field that we just mowed um but what i'm actually going to do um i have let's get ourselves down here i have already equipped oh, hello dear <laughs> just merge through the wall there uh, I've already equipped the tether onto this 724 and we've got the mower and the, the front and rear mowers equipped to this 724 because uh, I do very much want to get this uh, this job done so to speak so what I think I'm going to do um, again just for a bit of variety and a bit of content um, I'm going to do this whole work myself <laughs> yes the course play enthusiast is going to do field work himself for once so I'm going to run the mower with its widespreading function then i'm going to run the tether uh, and then i'm going to run the windrower and then i'm going to run the baler in these two fields and get all this grass at least out the ground uh, baled up into hay uh, and then this field is then open for me to start my work in and uh, stitch it together and remove, and remove the trees etc uh, so yeah i'm going to pop this whole thing into a bit of a kind of combined time lapse so I'll, I'll put some some mowing some tedding some rowing and some baling squeeze it all into a bit of a time lapse that's the idea so i'll see you all in a wee whilst time And we're done. There we go. So, 
48 bales we got off that uh, off those two fields combined uh, at 7250 liters a bale in the hay bales we've yielded 348,500 liters of hay now that was a lot that's a lot more than i was expecting to be honest uh, not that i had a number in my head as to what to expect but just from an what is essentially an unprepped what felt like a rel you know two relatively small fields that seems like quite a lot, but I'm not complaining. It's all good. We've got uh, plenty of hay to get stashed up into the uh, rafters up there. Keep us topped up, so that's excellent. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, that was the world's most slapdash and uh, rubbish mowing uh, session there, so please forgive me there. Quite honestly, and this is God's honest truth, that was that is the first time in a very long time that I have actually run field work on my own. <laughs> It's shameful, I know, but uh, obviously doing doing things the way I do things on here on my videos and stuff, obviously course play is what I turn to do so that I can film things and uh, make them into cinematics, but also if I need to, it means I can fire a job off and, and go and crack on with something else that I've ordinarily got to do. Uh, but yeah, that was the first time that I've done my own field work by hand on my own uh, for quite some time, so either way so maybe i'm out of practice i don't know <laughs> but job job that's all good so now i am in the position where i can crack on with the plan that i've got with this place uh obviously chop down a few of the trees cultivate in create fields and all that into a few of the areas smooth them all off and uh, get into the landscaping mode and then just uh, do a bit of that so what i'm likely going to do is i'm probably going to do that between episodes so come the next episode uh you'll probably find that that's going to have been done um and then i can cultivate in and what i think i might do is run the cultivator as a whole when that's done and then reseed the field so that all the grass will be, will be growing at, uh, at the same rate at the same time uh, that's probably how i'm going to do this one so yeah job's good very happy with that so i'm going to get all these bail uh, all these bales picked up as well of course i'll get that done that will be done before the next episode as well uh, but for now ladies and gentlemen i think i am going to call it here for today's episode thank you very much for watching uh, i really do hope you have enjoyed the video and found it a little bit of fun as always if you're new to my channel and you like my content please consider hitting that subscribe button and jumping on board joining the channel please give the video a like a thumbs up if you can it does do wonders for the channel it helps the youtube algorithm do its thing and as always, there are a host of links in the video description below with my Giants Partner promo code. If any of you are in the market for purchasing a DLC, an add-on, a season pass, or even the full game itself, and you like the idea of helping out a content creator at the same time, as always, I would be hugely appreciative. So thanks for your time, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.